21st Precinct, Sergeant Tierney. Yeah. All right. Get out your book and take down this alarm. 14-year-old boy missing from home. His name is Eddie Campton. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Five feet, four inches. You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. Just keep your eyes open for him. Yeah, that's right. Missing from home. Okay, all right. Twenty first precinct. Just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the one hundred seventy three thousand people wedged into the nine tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the twenty first. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and 4 lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. When I came into the station house at 3.35 p.m., I went around the desk to sign the blotter. Lieutenant Gorman, who would be desk officer during the forthcoming tour was already there and getting a summary of patrol conditions in the precinct from Lieutenant Snyder, who was working the 8 to 4. I walked into my office where I found a message to call the district surgeon of the department. As the call was being put through, I glanced at a few reports and communications which seemed important to the 124 man who left them in a prominent place on my desk. When I spoke to the doctor on the phone, he told me that the neurological tests and x-rays that had been made of me after an accident between an RMP car in which I was riding and another automobile were all negative. There was no sign of a head injury. I thanked the doctor for the good news and went out into the muster room and around behind the desk for the turnout of the platoon. The 58 men who would patrol the precinct for the next eight hours had marched out of the back room in a military manner and lined up in front of the desk where the roll call was just ended. Sack. Yeah. Anna. Yep. Cobb. Yeah. Underwood. Yeah. Vaccaro. Yeah. Valentine. Yeah. White. Yeah. Wyatt. Yeah. Ziggler. Yeah. All right, Captain. Just uh, one thing, men. We've had several complaints about automobiles illegally parked in bus stops and two near fire hydrants. I want you to pay particular attention to this condition. When I'm out on patrol later, if I see an automobile parked in that manner illegally, I also expect to see a summons hanging from it. All right, Sergeant. Post your platoon. Platoon, ten, shot. Five, six, four, four. Okay, Red. Uh, uh, just a second, Captain. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Snyder told me they're down to two pickets over there in that leather goods factory strike. Oh? Yeah. Things are pretty quiet after six o'clock. I'd like to pull the man we've got over there on a fixer off. I've got you from elsewhere. Okay, Red, if things are quiet. All right. Now, hold on. Lieutenant Gorman. Yes, Sergeant. I've got a detective of the narcotics squad on here. Uh, he just wanted to let you know they bagged three pushers in this precinct. They're on their way in with them to be booked. Okay. Anything else, Red? All right. Nothing pleasant, Captain. Excuse me, who do I see here? Oh, yes, ma'am, what is it? Well, I've been very worried about my son. I don't know where he is. How old is he? He's 14. He's gone from home? Yes. When did he leave? About uh, 10.30 this morning. He didn't come home for lunch. That's what worried me. And he didn't come home all afternoon. You see, I had Jenny take this beautiful lunch. We were going to have it on the terrace. And I know he loves lobster salad. He wouldn't miss that for the world. Do you have any idea where he went? No, I don't. I don't know. He didn't tell me. He just walked out. If I had any idea where he went, I'd go and get him. Well, why did he walk out? Oh, you know how boys are. He wanted to do something, and we had an argument. Well, Eddie's a little bit high-strung. He's always been high-strung. He was a hypertonic baby, you know. He just ran out of the apartment. He's been gone since 11 o'clock. Well, it's 4 o'clock now. He's only been gone five hours. 
He knows his way around the yard. Oh, yes, yes. Of course, we've lived in the same apartment since he was born. He's 695 Park Avenue. He knows the neighborhood. He knows it very well. Did he have any money in his pocket? Oh, a couple of dollars, I imagine. Three or four. Maybe he always carries some money. Well, then he could have bought lunch, couldn't he? Yes, he could have, but he likes lobster salad. I wouldn't worry too much, ma'am. He's 14 years old, and he knows his way around. If he doesn't show up by dinner time, you call us then. But I'm... I'm sure he'll be home by dinner. Well, I'm not so sure. Not after what happened with the snake. Excuse me. Yes? What snake? Well, the snake he brought home from camp. What happened with the snake? Well, you see, it, it got away. Was it a poisonous snake? Of course, that's what I'm so worried about. Well, where did it get away? I don't know. He didn't tell me. He just, he just came into the bedroom when I was having breakfast this morning, and he said, Mother, you, you told me to get rid of that snake, to give it to the zoo or someplace, and I didn't. I hid him. It got away and escaped. In your apartment? Oh, no, thank goodness. He took it out of the apartment. When I told him to get rid of it, I, I saw him go with it. I saw him leave. He had the box with him. When was this? Yesterday afternoon. And do you know where he took it? No, I have any idea. Well, didn't you ask him? Well, I was going to, but I was so upset at him lying to me over not getting rid of it. He promised you. I just, I just blew up. I just hit the ceiling and he ran out. What's your name, please? My name? Yes. This is Eleanor Campton. And uh, you live at 695 Park Avenue? Yes, that's right. And your boy's name is Edward? Edwin. We call him Eddie for short. This was a poisonous snake he brought home from camp? Yes. He made a little cage for it, and he brought it home from camp. He got home Friday. And he told you it had escaped, Mrs. Canton? Yes, that's right. Look, uh, Mrs. Canton, would you mind going over and waiting in my office a minute? I'll be right in. I'd like to talk to you about him. You don't think he'll be home by dinner time? Oh, he probably will, but uh, I'd like to talk to you about him. All right. Over there? Yes, uh, right over there. Just go in and have a seat. I will. Thank you very much. Ring upstairs to the detective's friend. Yes, sir. If that boy had a poisonous snake, we'd better start looking for him. Have somebody come down to my office. Yes, sir. Get me the detective's on here, Sergeant. Yes, sir. We'll send it right away. This is Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer. Oh, sit down, Miss Camden. Oh, yes. Do you, uh, do you think something happened to Eddie? No, I don't think so. I'm sure he's all right. Oh. I'm Captain Kennelly. Oh, how do you do? Now, about this snake your boy brought home. Oh, I'm just deathly afraid of snakes. I'm deathly afraid of them. <laughs> You're positive it was a poisonous snake? Oh, yes, of course. Excuse me. Yes, yes, yes. 21st Precinct, Captain Kennelly. This is Sergeant Tierney on TS, Captain. Yes, Sergeant. Lieutenant Gorman spoke to the detectives, and there'll be someone down to your office right away. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, where did Eddie go to camp? In Maine. And he came home Friday? Yes, Friday. His father and I met him at Grand Central. Does Mr. Campton know you came over here? Oh, no, no, no. His father's out of town on business. He's in Chicago. Well, I didn't know who to call or what to do, so I came over here. Well, you'd think when you pay a thousand dollars to have a boy spend the summer at camp, they wouldn't send him home with a snake. Mm, yeah. I mean, if he, if he wants to make a pair of moccasins or a belt or something like that to bring home, that's pretty all right. But to let a boy come home with a snake, a 14-year-old boy and a poisonous snake. Well, I'm sure they didn't know it. Uh, what kind of a snake is it? Well, I don't know. Well, you're sure it's a poisonous one? Well, snakes are poisonous, aren't they? No, they're not. They're not. Did he ever mention what kind of snake it is? Yes, no, I think he did. Um, did he tell you it was a rattlesnake? No, no, it's not a rattlesnake. I'm sure it's not a rattlesnake, no. Did he say it was a copperhead? A copperhead? Is that what he said it was? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. A water moccasin? A water moccasin, no, no. He didn't say it was a water moccasin. Well, well, um... I'm not sure what he said it was. Well, those are the only three kinds of poisonous snakes that you'll find in Maine. Oh. Now, I don't think that the camp authorities would let him come home with a venomous snake. You're sure it wasn't one of the harmless species? 
Well, I told you, Captain, to me, no snakes are harmless. <laughs> Do you know where he took it when he left the apartment? No, I haven't any idea. I really don't. But he told you it got loose. Yes, that's what the big fight was about. And did you call his friends before you came over here? Well, he, he only has two friends that he'd possibly go to. You see, he doesn't know many boys around New York. He goes way to school. And uh, these two boys happen to be in his class at school. I, I called both of them. He wasn't with either one of them. Well, had he been? Well, he'd been over at Roger's yesterday, but he wasn't there today. Did you speak to Roger or to his mother? I spoke to both Roger and his mother. He hadn't been there today at all. Roger was home all day. He was in the apartment. Well, that's what his mother told me. I see. And what about the other boy? Did you speak to him or his mother? Yes, I spoke to him and his mother. Now, does Eddie have any place that he might go? Any other friends where he might have taken the snake, where it might have gotten loose? Captain, if I knew I would have been there, I really would have. You don't know whether the snake was a water moccasin, a copperhead, or a rattlesnake. I was not that curious. I just wanted him to get rid of it. And do you think his friend Roger would know what kind of snake it is? Uh, he might. He, he, he probably would. Well, before we go any farther, I suggest you call Roger and ask him if he knows what kind of snake it is. Hmm? Uh, do you know his telephone number? We could look it up. Well, there's no need to look it up, Captain. Roger's mother and I are very good friends. I know the number. It's Regent 708098. Hmm? Uh, Sergeant, would you get Region 7, 8098? Yes. Here you are, Mr. Kempton. You? Come in. Oh, hello, man. Everyone was tied up, so I came down myself. Good, man. What have we got? Uh, Mrs. Kempton, this is Lieutenant King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, Miss Eleanor Kempton. How do you do? Captain? Did, uh, Red tell you what this was all about? Yes, sir, Captain. H hello, Mary. It's yeah. Eleanor. She's calling one of his friends to find out if the snake was poisonous. No. No, he didn't come home yet. No, not yet. Well, I haven't any idea, Mary. I wish I knew. Darling, you're sure Roger doesn't know more than he's telling? Uh-huh. Yes, I... I see. Well, I'm at the police station. Uh, would you oh, ask no. for the boy, no. Mrs. Camden? Yes, Mary. Yes, may I, may I talk to Roger, please? I just have to ask him something. Well, the, the policeman wants me to ask him something. Well, it's nothing, really. It's just a little information. All right, thank you, Mary. He has to know everything that's going on. He just has to. Does this boy know whether the snake is poisonous or not? Well, he should. He's almost as bad as Eddie. And he's a very good friend of Eddie's, too. He's, he's really... Oh, hello, Roger. No, not yet. Not yet, Roger. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know as soon as he does. I'll tell him to call you. Uh, listen, Roger, darling, did Eddie ever tell you what kind of snake that was? Yes. Yes. Oh, he did. Well, well, what kind of snake did he tell you it was? I see. I... All right, Roger, darling. Yes. Thank you very much. Will you tell your mother I'll call her this evening? No, 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 I don't have time to talk to her now. I'll call her as soon as I get home. Yes, yes, dear. Yes, Roger, I will. I will. Goodbye. Well. What kind of snake was it, Mrs. Hammond? Well, Roger says that Eddie told him it was a copper head. Oh, well, that's one of the bad kind, isn't it? Yes, it is. Especially when it's running around loose. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Here's George Frame with a word of advice. Get on the right side, baby. Get on the right side, baby. And what track's the right track? The one that leads to the bank, or wherever you're keeping those Series E United States savings bonds you've been getting through the payroll savings plan. Sure is a good feeling you know those bonds are coming in regularly, isn't it? Like old Ben Franklin said, a penny saved is a penny earned. And by putting your pennies and dollars into United States savings bonds, you earn yourself a mighty nice interest rate. So remember what George Frame says. 
back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. There was very little doubt in the minds of either myself or Lieutenant Matt King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, that the 14-year-old boy, Eddie Canton, would return to his home before long. My concern at this time was not so much the boy, but the fact that it was he alone who knew where a venomous snake was loose. As anyone under the age of 18 who was reported missing from home for any reason can technically be considered a missing persons case, the investigation was undertaken on that basis. Lieutenant King assigned two detectives to start work immediately to locate the boy. Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer, notified the missing persons bureau. The communications bureau was also notified, and a description of the boy was put out on the telepath circuit, which reaches every precinct house in the city. In the meantime, as each patrolman on post and those on radio motor patrol in the 25th first made his hourly ring into the station house from call boxes scattered throughout the precinct, he was given a description of the boy by Sergeant Kinney on telephone switchboard duty. The adjacent 19th and 23rd precincts and the 22nd precinct, which covers Central Park, were notified and requested to give similar alarms to patrolmen on post. By 6 p.m., when I went out on patrol, there was no sign of the boy. I toured the entire precinct in sector car number two with patrolman Paul Vaccaro as operator, and at 20 minutes after seven, we were driving north on Madison Avenue in the 70s. Six, seven, five, Take a turn up to 86, Vaccaro. Yes, sir. Then we'll come back on Lexington. Yes, sir. Uh, but stop at the next call box. I want to ring in. Yes, sir, Captain. That kid stays out on the street after dark. We ought to be able to spot him then, Captain. Well, uh, maybe he's not out on the street. Yes, sir. You want to bring him from there, Captain? Yeah, that's all right. The channel. Hang a summons on that Plymouth for parking illegally in the bus stop zone. Captain Kennelly, Box 17. Any sign of the boy, Sergeant? No, sir, not yet. All right, let me speak to Lieutenant Gorman. Yes, Lieutenant Captain Kennelly. All right, Captain. 21st Precinct, Lieutenant Gorman. Captain Kennelly, what's going on, Red? Nothing much, Captain. Quiet and Uh, Did you talk to the detectives? Any sign of that boy? Yes, sir. All right. I'll be in the house in about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, just a second, Captain. Uh, yes, Sergeant? Yeah? Yeah? Where? We've got him, Captain. The boy? Yes, sir. Where? The copy's right here. He saw the kid sitting on the bench outside the first floor of 76. Is he sure of the kid's identity? Uh, just a second, Captain. Uh, Sergeant? Oh, that's all right, Brett. I'll go. We're right close to that. Okay, Captain. Oh, uh, notify his mother. We've got him. Yes. Did uh, you hang a summons on that Plymouth battalion? There's one on it already, Captain. Oh, good. Let me fix some shit, Vaccaro. Yeah. Oh, we located the boy. Oh? That's what he is. He was sitting on a bench outside the park wall. The uh, kid say where the snake was. Uh, Jacoby was just ringing in when I did. We're going over to get him now. Okay. 
I don't know what that kid would want with a snake on Park Avenue. Have you got any brothers and sisters, Captain? No. Dog would be better than snake. Well, we've got a corral. But everybody to their own place, I guess. I had a friend who raised hands. He could just sit and watch him for hours. I can never see him personally. He said, good are they? Run around a cave. There they are. Hello, Jacoby. Cotton. Good work. Thank you. You're ready, Camden. Is that right? That's right, yes. You had your mother plenty worried. Did I? Oh, I don't think so. She doesn't worry much. Not about anything. You were sitting over there, uh, right across the street on the bench outside the park wall reading a comic book. Oh, it's not one of those gory ones. It's one of the approved ones. I recognize him from the description of his clothing. Okay, Jacoby, you stay on the job here. We'll take him back. Yes, sir. In the car, son. Okay. Goodbye, and thanks a lot. You're welcome, son. Go ahead, Eddie. Yes, sir. Hello. Hi. Come on, move all the way over here. Yes, sir. Boy, this is the first time I ever rode in a police car. Okay, the car. Let's go to the station house. That's it. Where's the siren? Where's the button that says to make the siren blow? Right there, right on the floor. This? No, don't. Don't touch it. Oh, I won't. Eddie, where did the snake get loose? Hey, can you blow the siren any time you want to? Where did the snake get loose, Eddie? I'm sorry. I can't tell you. You can't or you won't? I won't. I just won't. I don't mean to be impolite. I was taught to be very polite. I won't tell you. I won't because they'll go there and kill him. Don't you think we ought to get a copperhead that's running around loose? There's a lot worse things running around loose. A lot worse things. When we reached the station house, Eddie had still not told us where the copperhead had gotten loose. Lieutenant King was waiting in the muster room. We took Eddie into my office and sat him down on a chair. For some minutes, we tried to convince him of the urgency involved. Now, look, boy, if someone gets bitten by that snake, you know whose fault it'll be, don't you? I was willing to keep it in my apartment, in my room. I wanted to keep him in the cage. My mother wouldn't let me. Oh, he's got plenty of room up there. But do you know how many bedrooms we have in that apartment? We have five bedrooms. And there's just my mother and my father and myself and the maid. That's all. And the maid doesn't even sleep there. There's plenty of room. She wouldn't let me keep it. Well, it's not a question of that anymore, Eddie. You don't want to be responsible for someone getting bitten, maybe someone dying. They have a very efficient serum today for snake bites. And besides, the copperhead is the least poisonous of all poisonous snakes. Eddie, let's come off it now, huh? Where is it? Where did it get loose? I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But you go there and you'll shoot him. And I don't want you to shoot him. What else do you expect us to do with him? Let that thing roam around till it bites somebody? The snake never bothers anybody unless they bother him. Eddie. Eddie, darling. Where'd you go? Oh, Oh, mother. Oh, Eddie, you don't know how worried I've been. I've been frantic all day. Don't do that to me, Eddie. Don't ever do that to me again. I'm sorry. Well, you should be, darling. You don't know what you put me through today. You really... You ought to be ashamed of yourself, a grown boy like you, after all that we do for you. And I said I was sorry. Well, all I can say is that you... You missed a very good lunch, dear, with lobster salad. You know that. You missed a good dinner, too. Well, I ate. Hmm. Hamburgers, I'll bet. Oh, that's right, Mother. Hamburgers. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with you, Eddie. I just don't know when your father hears this story. Oh, I, I, I want to thank you, gentlemen. I know how much effort you put into this. I really appreciate it. Well, uh, we're not through yet, Mrs. Campton. No. He hasn't told us where that snake got loose. Oh, my goodness. Well, Eddie, tell them, dear. I can't. They'll kill it. Of course they'll kill it. That's what they should do. 
Eddie, you should never bring those things home. I refuse to let you have another animal in this house. I don't want another pet. I don't want another snake. I don't want a dog. I, I don't want a, a turtle. I don't want anything in the house. Nothing. Now, do you understand that? Yes, I understand it, Mother. Uh, Mrs. Camden, would you mind waiting outside for just a few minutes? Yeah. We want to talk to Eddie. We want him to tell us where that snake is. Eddie, tell him. Would you wait outside, please? Just outside the door. It'll be all right. Well, he, he's my boy. I'm entitled to be in here. We'd appreciate it, Mrs. Stanton. Well, uh, well, I don't know why I can't be in here. Matt, would you shut the door? Yes, sir. It's right there. It's all right, Mrs. Stanton. All right, Eddie. Like your mother says, you're a big boy now. Where did that snake get loose? Eddie, now we're going to stop playing games. You brought a snake into the city of New York in violation of the law. A venomous snake. It's loose someplace and it's a danger to the lives of I don't know how many people. I want you to sit down and think about it. I want you to sit there and think about that for a minute. You know what you've done. You kill him. I don't want you to kill him. What do you expect us to do? Let some people get killed? Now, where is he? Oh, would you let me capture him and get him to the zoo? Well, I can handle snakes. I know exactly what I'm doing and how to do it. Well, I caught him. All I need is a fork stick. If you get me a fork stick, that'll be fine. I'll kick him just like I caught him up in Maine. Where does he get loose? Well, can I do it? Can I capture him myself and take him over to the zoo? Just tell us where he got loose. I'll be glad to tell you if you'll promise me you won't kill him. That's what you're going to do. Kill him, isn't it? Where is he? Promise me you won't kill him. Now, look, boy, I could promise you we won't, but I want you to tell us without my making you a promise, because I can't promise you anything. That copperhead is a menace to human life. Now, I want you to tell me where he is. All right. Where is he? In the basement of my apartment house. He got loose in the basement there. That was this morning? Yes, about 10, 15. Something like that, anyhow. My mother told me to take him out of the house yesterday afternoon. And I did. I took him down to the basement. I went downstairs this morning to see him. I opened up the box and he got loose. Well, he just got out. And I couldn't find him. I looked all over. So I went up to tell him. He got very excited. So I left. Well, you'll have to understand, Eddie. I don't think she likes snakes. No, I understand. I don't think she likes much of anything. Matt, let's call the ASPCA. Maybe they've got a fork stick. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Tierney. What do you mean he's missing? Missing from where? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, how long ago did he leave? Uh-huh. And I'll so it goes. Me. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct. A factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Catherine Bard, Santa Sotega, Bill Quinn, Lawson Zerbe, and Charles Taylor. Written and directed by Stanley Nitz. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking.